Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Crypto News Podcast. We are buzzing, as always, still coming in hot from Mexico. It's your host, Matt Zahab, and I'm super pumped to have the second guest from the Definity Foundation on the show today. Today, we have Dominic Williams, the founder and chief scientist of Definity Foundation, a major contributor to the internet computer ICP blockchain. Dominic is a crypto theoretician and entrepreneur who has been involved in the blockchain space since 2013, a true veteran, folks, prior to which he was an engineering entrepreneur that created multiple internet technologies and products. He specializes in distributed computing and crypto network theory, having proposed multiple innovations in use today. Super pumped to have you on the show today. Dom, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm super glad to be here. Pumped to have you on, mate. We got to start with this like Star Trek 2050-esque studio that you guys built. Yeah. Folks, as always, I will include this in the show notes. This is this looks like the friggin' main newsroom at BNN or CNBC, Fox News, CNN, whatever you want to call it. This is about as all world as it gets. It is absolutely bonkers. Tom, what was the purpose of this build out? And like, what's what was the inspo behind this? This literally looks like a newsroom out of Star Trek. I friggin' love it. So, you know, it's in the basement of our Zurich HQ. And the reason, you know, we'd, we've had various studios before and they never quite worked. And what we're seeing in Web3 is that, you know, people have got short attention spans and there's so much noise. And you can put out, like, you know, long-form content. Like, recently I just made this, made this post, Red Pill, Blue Pill, The Hidden History of the Internet Computer and Why It'll Win. Um, I guess it's probably more than 20,000 words. The reality is that, you know, there's a small number of people that, you know, want to digest that much information. So um, the decision was made that we need to, you know, communicate in a more digestible, relatable way because, you know, the Definity Foundation is a very technical organization. And that we're going to create these, like, short-form videos, maybe one or two a week, and, and push them out on crypto Twitter. So this is the, the start of it. This is the first uh, podcast we, we've used this studio for. Dom, just like you said, the Definity Foundation is a very tentacle-esque organization. Just so many different, you know, pockets of the crypto sphere. One of the things I'd love to jump into right away is AI. You've been very vocal about this on Twitter. You've had some really spicy takes as well. Everyone just wants to like, you know, <laughs> throw an LLM into their product or make a chat bot or yeah. maybe throw an agent in and call it AI. But you have a very unique um viewpoint. And I absolutely love this. Let's jump right into it. Why should AI projects be decentralized and sort of segue that into everything that Definity and ICP is doing in the AI space today? The, you're right. There's everyone in, in crypto is talking about AI. There's the blockchain for AI, the token for AI, chat GBT integration that you can use to put chat into your Web3 service. You know, we think all that's great, but we think in more fundamental terms. So, you know, the mission of Definity is to reinvent compute on blockchain. And that means we see blockchain as it is today on the internet computer, uh, hosting social networks and order book exchanges and things like that. And the internet computer is capable of acting like a kind of crypto cloud where you can build anything with uh, smart contracts. And uh, that, that's why if you go to the, the Internet Computer Dashboard, you'll see that it's, it's processing about 330,000, 350,000 Ethereum equivalent transactions a second um, today. Wild. And that just reflects the amount of you know, virtual machine com compute going on on the Internet Computer. And the Internet Computer um, that hosts everything, right? It, it, you know, smart contracts on the Internet Computer can process HTTP. So... Smart contracts are directly serving um, user experiences in end users' browsers. And uh, they're able to store, you know, by comparison with traditional blockchains, you know, massive amounts of, of data um, and perform massive amounts of processing. So uh, within the uh, Internet Computer Network, um, some smart contracts now have uh, a 400 gigabyte memory page limit. So the internet computer, you know, smart contracts on the internet computer uh, are a bundle of WebAssembly bytecode and persistent memory pages, and some, and they run in parallel. And and some of these smart contracts are now packing, you know, up to 400 gigabytes of persistent memory. So that provides enough memory, and there's already enough compute power to to run AI. And we think 
the future of AI very generally, um, or the long tail of AI, you know, where people run their own models, is probably um, one where AI runs a smart contracts on blockchains. And today, that's already possible on the internet computer. It's, it is truly, truly wild. I'd love if you could jump into sort of the importance of, of decentralizing AI as a whole. Of course, we're going to jump back into, you know, to, to ICP and Definity. But you have these, everyone's obviously most familiar with OpenAI. You have NVIDIA. You have all the big boys in sort of Web2. Um, on the Fortune 500, I mean, these companies are just eating up a stupendous amount of market share, dominating the uh, sort of the big 10, I guess the whole S&P for that matter. It can be pretty scary. I feel like we could be entering right into spooky town if, you know, if, if someone like Sam Altman and the OpenAI crew <laughs> decides to release some type of AGI model and it's truly not decentralized and one group of lads and lasses has control of everything. Um, and this is where crypto comes in handy. This is where blockchain comes in handy, where, you know, there's a public model of verification um, for on the transaction side of things. You can obviously use whatever, you know, crypto or blockchain you wish. And it sort of gives power back to the people. You know, this is sort of crypto's whole ethos from just a, a finance and unbanking yourself perspective. But I'd love if you could get into the importance of actually decentralizing AI and, and how we can use crypto and blockchain to actually make that happen. Yeah, um, I think, you know, I share your concern that, you know, operations like OpenAI are really centralization on, on, on steroids. The, the good news is that, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, good, the good news is, though, that um, while these, like, you know, fundamental large language models um, backed with huge amounts of money, um, you know, do, do grab a lot of attention, uh, in the future, we're going to see millions of individual AI models running. And they'll be dedicated to specific tasks. I mean, if you look at a service like TikTok or Instagram, in, in actual fact, when you're consuming content, you're, you're really sort of talking or interacting with an AI. The AI is, you know, all the information about how long you look at a particular video and what you like and so on and so forth um, is being fed back to an AI that's then recommending more content for you. And that's what makes it so sticky. So those kind of content recommendation neural networks, for example, um, will be very prevalent in, in the Web3 field. You'll have standalone large language models that coordinate organizations. So something I described recently was this idea of an AI called Delphi that some company runs, a technical company runs, and Delphi you know, is connected to the company's calendar system, it's connected to GitHub, Jira, Slack, email, and so on and so forth. And it, it enables, it acts as a kind of glue that holds um, the, the company together. So for example, um, I could say, hey Delphi, tell me if our CTO, Jan Kamenich, is, is available this afternoon. Oh great, could you, could you make a, you know, a, a, a calendar entry for me? I could ask, um, who's running some team? Um, is anybody on that team reporting blockers? How's progress? Mm. Or I could ask, mm. um, has anybody got any you know, bright new ideas inside the organization? Or has anybody got ideas about um, you know, m new information that would be suitable for um, sharing on social media? And now, here's the problem. First of all, um, this AI model is going to have access to all of this organization's most sensitive data. And it's going to become the number one target for hackers. And if hackers manage to compromise the infrastructure Delphi runs on, um, it's like a you know, honeypot for them. They can now access all of the um, it's a uh, co company's most confidential information because the AI is like, you know, nexus for this information. So that's the first problem. Um, it's very important that um, the, these AIs like Delphi don't, don't get hacked. Um, it's also important that, you know, users interact, you know, within the organization, interact with these AIs with strong blockchain-based authentication because imagine there was, um, you know, a malicious actor inside the company and they impersonated other people and started feeding in, you know, incorrect information in, into the model. Well, the, the problem is the AI wouldn't know that information is incorrect and would incorporate it into its context. And by the time it's realized bad information is being fed in, you know, effectively the AI may have become corrupted. Um, imagine also that the AI, this Delphi, is running 
on traditional infrastructure and, you know, something goes wrong, hard drive breaks or machine crashes or whatever it is, Delphi goes offline, you know, by the nature of its functionality, the organization will have come to completely depend on the functionality that Delphi provides. And it'll be incredibly disruptive if, if the AI goes down. So for all these kinds of reasons, it's going to be very important that AI is tamper-proof. You get that yep. from smart contracts. Yep. AI is accessed via strong authentication. You get that from blockchain or something like internet identity on the internet computer. And that the AI is unstoppable. So when you think about it, you know, AI and blockchain fit together perfectly. Um, blockchain is the only way of creating a tamper-proof, unstoppable compute platform. And what we've done at Affinity is, you know, worked on technology that's made it possible for the internet computer blockchain to run computation at scale. So, you know, today it's hosting many orders of magnitude more data and computation than traditional blockchains. And that's why it's able to run AI as smart contracts. I love that. I mean, speaking of smart contracts, we might as well jump into sort of AI based DeFi and decentralized applications, dApps. You had a great tweet um, a couple of days ago, Dom, and you were just like the power of AI smart contracts. Imagine if your OISI, which is a 100% on-chain, you know, wallet with AI inside could instruct, you know, anything you want it, swap one inch for uni immediately, boom, it does it. If RAP BTC reaches X amount of dollars, then swap for Tether or Circle, boom, it does it. Like, besides using a centralized exchange and centralized exchanges still realistically, along with a couple dApps, have the cleanest quick swap trading applications where it's literally just like input currency X, output yep. currency Y, click, boom, no bullshit. You don't need to worry about slippage or tolerance or fees or anything like that. It just does it. Imagine literally just writing that or the next level speaking that into your phone like Siri and boom, the transaction's yeah. done. And that's all world. That 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 will onboard the masses. That will get web two into web three. Totally. Right and I know there's two dimensions to this. One is just usability. Imagine you're at a crypto conference and you've just spoken to you know, the people involved in some projects and you realize you think this is this is gonna be big. Wouldn't it be great just to get out your phone and 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 um you know verbally um, provide instructions to an AI crypto wallet that will then carry them out for you. But um so on the one hand you have this convenience thing. On the other hand, the system can make it possible for normal people to create much more complex actions. So you know a, a simple example would be hey look, you know, uh if wrapped Bitcoin on Ethereum reaches 100K, then you know, sell five wrap Bitcoin for USDC. Um, mm. And only do this if the slippage is less than whatever, right? So you speak the instructions in and the AI model will read back to you or you know, show you on the screen some kind of pseudocode, but not you know, complex pseudocode, pseudocode that a lay person can understand. Yeah. And if they then press confirm, that instruction will sit there inside the uh, AI smart contract wallet or, or the component. The AI really just creates that pseudocode. And then once you've confirmed it, it becomes an instruction within the smart contract wallet. On the internet computer, um, smart contracts can be invoked on a heartbeat. So, you know, they can be periodically woken up and they can, you know, check a price oracle or something like that and um, behave, you know, according to instructions that have been um, previously made. So, it will give people a way of, you know, firstly, buying and selling crypto and making trades and so on incredibly conveniently. And on the other hand, it'll also help uh, lay people create complex DeFi actions based on conditions and things like that. Whereas on the one hand, you can, you know, it's very easy to create a simple swap interface. But, you know, things start getting complex if you really have to en enable people to create almost arbitrary instructions. And that's where, that's where AI can come in. You can just tell it what you want. It'll display a concise pseudocode that's, you know, readable to the layman. And if they like it, they press confirm and boom, it's done. That's all world. I, I can't wait for this to happen. <laughs> How long? Do you give it? I mean, I, I hate, I, I hate being a guy who asks for timelines, but like, what's, what's good here? So, um, I think, look, it's not, it's not finalized yet, but I, I think the first demo I'm going to give of AI will be 
uh, image classification. So you can like, upload a photograph and it'll tell you what it is, which is already very, very cool if you think that that's been yeah. done by a smart contract. We're then going to progress uh, probably through a series of steps to, towards a, a large language model demo. We're also working with some partners who, who um, are AI experts, and they've got various plans, various things they want to run on the internet computer. I mean, ideas like uh, you can have a smart contract on the internet computer that browses through the smart contracts on Ethereum, and you know you can match the code hash to, to GitHub, and then you can um, the smart contract can verify that there are no sort of reentrancy attacks possible and things mm. like that, and like you know kite mark. <laughs> That's funny. Kite mark um, the the Ethereum smart contracts. So there's a lot of ideas like that. I mean, uh, also when you can do things like face recognition, which is actually kind of a similar task to uh, you know image classification. Things like you know fully autonomous KYC are possible. So users can connect to the smart contract via video link and hold up you know driving license in the smart contract and decide whether the photo on the driving license matches the person. Who, who it's interacting with. So cool. I love that. Dom, you're on a roll, mate. Got to take a quick break and give a huge shout out to our sponsor of the show. And we, when we get back, we're going to talk about AI models hosted on the blockchain, multi-chain, DeFi, a little bit of decentralized cloud computing, and maybe a couple teasers as well. Until then, huge shout out to Prime XPT, longtime friends and sponsors of the CryptoNews.com podcast. We love these guys as they offer a robust trading system for both beginners and professional traders. It doesn't matter if you're a rookie or a vet. You can easily design and customize your layouts and widgets to best fit your trading style and take advantage of Prime XPT's highly reliable market data and performance. The promo code is CryptoNews50. They are giving a sweet promo code, which is CryptoNews50, to receive 50% of your deposit credited to your trading account. Again, that is CryptoNews50, all in order to receive 50% of your deposit credited to your trading account. Now back to the show with Dom. Let's jump right into hosting AI models on the blockchain. This is something that uh, tickles my fancy a little bit here, Dom. I am an absolute sieve when it comes to anything coding related, with the exception of maybe a quick little, you know, control F12 uh, to pop up the, you know, the sort of the HTML thing in my browser a couple of times when I've had to help a team launch something. That's about the furthest I can go when it comes to coding. Um, I actually hosted my own, you know, my my own LLM on, on my computer. Uh, it was pretty nice. cool. I mean, I could watch a couple of YouTube videos. But again, you know, I had to set it up with a external hard drive. I was like, ah, what am I doing? We're still a little out of my pay grade. Hosting AI models on the blockchain is incredibly cool. It aims to address the lack of transparency. And again, when you host AI models on ICP and are ran with the smart contracts, it makes the training just that much easier. I'd love if you could get into why hosting AI models on the blockchain is so efficient and why it's definitely the future of AI hosting. Well, I was, you know, the DGNs out there um, will, will, you know, love to imagine things like, you know, AI models being traded as NFTs and all of, all of that be possible. But it's you know, so also cool. case, yeah, and, and it will be very cool, right? And um, it's it's also the case, though, that you know that that just running uh, AI smart contracts provides you know these incredible advantages with respect to things like security being unstoppable and, and so on. And and by the way, we mentioned, uh, you mentioned earlier, you know, the, the possibility of like an AGI sort of becoming malevolent and and doing terrible things to society. Um, if you run AI as a smart contract, you can run it under the control of a DAO. And uh, so mm. that greatly uh, limits its scope for causing mischief. Now, running AI as a smart contract isn't more efficient than running it on a standalone server because um, there's a certain amount of replication involved. So on the internet computer, you, you can pretty much choose the level of replication. On a standard system subnet, it's doing like 13x replication. Um, it's very smart replication. It's replicating uh, you know, compute across node machines that are owned by independent people that are run and installed in independent data centers where the data centers are in different geographies and different jurisdictions. That's called deterministic decentralization. Um, in the future, there may be lower trust AI subnets which only have like 4x replication, which still gives uh, you know very impressive security and, and, and resilience. So if you want the absolute most efficient AI, you know, you'd run it on a dedicated AI cloud. Um, yeah. It's certainly a good idea to train AI initially, at least at the moment, 
um, off-chain because that's the most expensive and compute-intensive bit and use the, use, use the blockchain, uh, use AI running smart contracts to, to do inference. But that's okay, you know, if you, if you, you know, if you take a large language model like uh, Llama or Mistral, Mistral it's, it's already been trained at great ex expense, right? So, you know, that model has a large number of parameters, like weight, neuron weights, and you can build on top of that. You're not training the large language model from scratch. And with an application like Delphi that we talked about before, in actual fact, the large language model is, you know, slurping all this company data like, you know, calendar and email and Slack and Jira and GitHub into its context, which is then being updated within, within the smart contract. But the actual weights are staying the same. I'm not getting too technical. So, uh, you know, inference is actually pretty efficient. And um, again, I don't get, get too technical, but you can actually go higher if you want with replication and scale out its ability to provide inference that doesn't need to update the context, for example. So, you mm. know, the difference is, like, if you, if you said to Delphi, oh, I've got this great idea that, you know, the company could do, or, you know, I've got this blocker, that would actually update the context. But if I just said to Delphi, hey, who's running this team? Um, has anybody on that team reported a blocker? That's something that, you know, uh, doesn't have to be, go through consensus. It can be done in a slightly different way. And the, the higher the level of replication, the, the more of those kind of queries you can do. So the current limitations on the internet computer are the amount of main memory that a smart contract has. So currently, each smart contract has four gigabytes of main memory. That's because we're running 32-bit WASM. And that limits the number of parameters weights that you can get into memory and you need them in memory. So that, that's a current bottleneck. And you know, I'm really excited about this. I'm pleased to say that um, we're moving to 64-bit WASM soon, which completely removes that restriction. And um, we'll probably increase the you know, the maximum amount of main memory to 32 gigabytes or something like that. Um, and that will make it possible to run these large language models. Also, currently uh, in the demos, people will see me give soon, you know, image classification, face, face recognition, that kind of thing, you know, can take like 10 seconds. That's wild. Yeah, that's, that's, that's absolutely kind of, wild. But it works, right? And that's the impressive thing. This is like, you know, we've just started down this path and, you know, People who've watched Affinity over the years know that things are going to get better and better and better. Um, so already now we've got in our work pipeline something called SIMD instructions. Um, so it took us a while to determine these things were uh, deterministic. So SIMD instructions will be put into the smart contract execution environment. That will massively speed up these AI smart contracts. And we've got a whole lot of other things in the works too. Dom, this, I mean, there's a couple more areas that we definitely need to touch on because you guys are moving and grooving on so many cool things. But just as a, as a, and, and there's no way I'm going to put myself anywhere close to your category. We are in a much different uh, arena, you and I. But um, as a builder, like, how do you decide which baskets to put your eggs into, especially with such a technology like AI? Um, and decentralization. And again, like you said, with all the tentacles that, you know, that ICP and Affinity has, like, how the heck do you and the team decide, hey, we're going to put X amount of effort into this, X percentage into this? Like, that must be so tough because there's just so many different areas that can really move the needle right now. Like, what's the sauce there? What's the workflow look like? Well, I think there are two main areas that we're focusing on that, that are kind of new. One is helping optimize the internet computer to run AI. So, you know, we can run larger and larger models and more and more efficiently. And the other one is this thing called Utopia, which will enable the enterprise sector, enterprises, governments, mm. NGOs, um, and so on, uh, to run like private internet computers that can integrate with the public internet computer and with each other. And I think that reflects actually you know, the power of this technology. Um, you know, people who will use this utopia technology to create these private clouds um, will just be focused on the, the, the fact that online systems and services are tamper-proof and they're unstoppable and they're writing serverless code, which of course is, you know, canister smart contract code. And they won't, you know, ever think about meme coins and NFTs and all the stuff that we do in the blockchain space. They'll just be going, this is absolutely incredible, um, game-changing uh, technology that reinvents compute, so I don't need cybersecurity anymore and so on. So both of these things, AI and Utopia, will add a lot of value to the public internet computer network, in, in my opinion. So those are key areas. But, you know, all the, all the time behind the scenes, um, there are lots of people working to optimize the internet computer. I think it's, it's fair to say 
Um, this is something which we're trying to correct. Um, the, the Internet Computer Project isn't the best at marketing itself. It tends to be too f- tech focused. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, on, on other blockchains, you get these like really like trivial features and they're sort yeah. of like wrapped up in this big release with a fancy name and then it's marketed to hell. You know, those kind of features are typically being pushed into the internet or, or advances are being pushed into the Internet Computer um, very, very um, regularly and there's no fanfare at all. And that's really our fault and um, there's something we're aiming to fix. Um, a great example of this is something called deterministic time slicing. It's a huge achievement. So the internet computer actually can run comput- smart contract computations that span multiple blocks. And essentially what it does is it has like four logical uh, processes, which, which are actually real processes on these node machines. And you know, it puts a smart contract onto the processor, lets it consume a certain number of cycles, internet computer equivalent of gas, and then yep. takes it off the processor and puts another um, smart contract on. And uh, these the computations, you know, these smart contract functions that are being evoked, which transactions essentially, can be executed over multiple blocks. And so you can actually do a huge amount of computation in a single smart contract transaction. And this is a huge advance because it essentially means that the internet computer is a genuine decentralized operating system. So if you think about operating systems, that's the software that makes hardware, computing hardware usable. So, you know, you've got Android um, in the Google universe, you've got iOS in the Apple universe for phones, you've got like, you know, OS X on MacBooks, you've got Windows on Windows laptops and so on, you've got Linux on backend servers. And, you know, these operating systems run on a single computer. The ICP stack, uh, you know, works as a kind of operating system that runs across multiple compute units. And despite that, it's still doing the same kind of uh, things that, you know, the operating system, you know, multitasking things that, you know, traditional operating system does. So, I mean, you know, these things are so much more uh, further in advance than uh, what people are used to on, 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 on blockchain. It can be very difficult. Oftentimes people say to me, like, you know, I say to them, look, internet computers, blockchain is cloud, right? Uh, You know, the blockchain is now a serverless cloud where you create online systems and services using smart contract software. And they'll say things like, well, you know, isn't leading blockchain X and Y already a decentralized cloud? Isn't that what everyone's doing? And, you know, I say to them, well, look, no, not quite, because, like, you know, the internet computers are running, like, social networks today and, you know, order book exchanges and things like that. And actually, on these traditional blockchains, you, you, you can't even store a phone photo, right? And people get <laughs> confused because they see NFTs and why. Well, of course, there's, there's photos on the. No, those photos are actually stored on Amazon Web Services or some yeah. decentralized service that's backed by Amazon Web Services. Um, you know, the blockchain is just storing, you know, very tiny amounts of data and performing very tiny amounts of compute, you know, their capacity for compute is far less than a Raspberry Pi. You know, one of those little kind of like circuit <laughs> problem thing, things yeah, that kids, yeah, yeah. kids run, right? Run Linux yeah. on to learn how to program. But when you think about the world today, I, you know, I think every year there are 10 million powerful server machines shipping. 10 million new ones shipping every year. And I forget the exact numbers, but things are like 50 zettabytes of uh, data being processed and stored every year. I mean, the difference between where blockchain is today and where it has to go to become a you know a crypto cloud um, is is a long one. Um, today, you know, you've only got you know three real three lanes in blockchain. You know, the first lane is 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 Bitcoin. Uh, was was yeah. created by Bitcoin, and then you had you know Litecoin is one of the competitors that survived. You know, silver's yeah. Bitcoin's gold, and then there's all the you know the dead ones like Feathercoin. So the first lane's, you know, cryptocurrency, you know, ded- you know, blockchains that are dedicated to hosting a ledger. The second lane is for blockchains that host smart contracts. And yeah. um, the first obviously was, was was Ethereum, really. And then, you know, there are, you know, a ton of uh, competitors thousands. biting at its Yeah, thousands biting at its heels today. And then there's a third lane, which is, you know, true world computer blockchain that is designed to you know, run things like social networks and order book exchanges and everything else, and and um, obviously including AI, right? And yeah. that's that's where we are. And it, it, I think because this, we're the only one in lane three currently, it's very difficult to communicate that. People always assume that the internet computers in lane two, <laughs> and we're you know one of these traditional blockchains hosting smart contracts that you know uh, have less com- you know host less compute capacity than a Raspberry Pi, whereas in fact the internet computer is just hosting a vast amount uh, of computation and data today. 
It's so cool. Dom, I wish we had more time here, mate. Um, I know we got to wrap up soon. I'm just going to, uh, we got to have you on for round two because we barely scratched the surface. Any, any really, I mean, I know there's so many, but any super cool releases, events, tidbits of news that you guys are releasing in the next couple of weeks that we can, you know, maybe uh, tickle some people's fancy in the meantime, give us, give us a couple of gold nuggets uh, and then we'll wrap up here, mate. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, depending on when, when this is released, I think, um, you know, uh, you'll start seeing, the videos, uh, credit using the same studio. Yeah, really, you, you've you've got the honor of being the first uh, podcast to be recorded here, and Love and it. Uh, following this, there's going to be a whole lot of videos recorded here. Um, and I, the, the first one is going to demonstrate AI um, running on the blockchain and kind of world first, but it'll be followed with lots more AI demos. So you know, we're going to be creating these demos. Um, sharing the GitHub repos so that, you know, uh, engineers who are interested can try it out for themselves. But we're also, you know, going to be progressively improving the the performance of AI. And as we, you know, extend and improve the execution environment, making more memory available to canister smart contracts and things like that, we're going to be able to, you know, keep upping the ante with the demos and, you know, we're progressing towards a large language model. That's the plan. So that's going to be very exciting. I, you know, on Twitter, I, I did a... Uh, I shared a teaser of the Utopia demo. I think there are going to be more of those coming. Oh gosh, other projects in the wings that people might want to know about. There's another one called Orbit. Orbit is is going to be an open source project, so people will be able to you know, take the, the code and do what they want with it. And it will enable you to create institutional grade crypto custody, cross-chain crypto custody solution on the internet computer that's completely decentralized. So you'll be able to just you know, take this code in the repo, um, compile it, upload it to the internet computer, and you'll have your own institutional grade custody solution. Now, if you wanted to, you could assign control over that institutional grade custody solution to a DAO, and it could be kind of like a decentralized service, or you could just use it to custody, you know, digital assets within your own organization, and, you know, it makes, it makes it very easy using a graphical user interface to define very complex rule sets about, you know, how assets are transferred or not. So those, those are some of the big things coming, I think. Don, can't wait to have you on for round two, mate. Uh, again, you, just, you made my head spin. So many uh, so many incredible things here. You guys are moving and grooving. And again, totally agree um, on the marketing side of things. You guys, I don't want to say under-marketed, but under-appreciated is, is definitely the right word. Um, when people think of your team, it's like, uh, okay, they do a little bit of everything, but I feel like there's perhaps, and my apologies if I'm overstepping, but I feel like sometimes there's not a specific bucket that people put you guys into and, and in crypto everyone loves, you know, Bitcoin is the, is the ledger and gold, ETH is, you know, gas and and smart contracts. Everyone loves to sort of, you know, have a label on their head, but hopefully that changes soon. But either way, Tom, absolutely incredible episode. Appreciate you coming on. Before you go, you. can you please let our listeners know where they can find you personally and Definity online and on socials? Sure. So you can find me on Twitter. That's the best place. It's uh, Dominic, D-O-M-I-N-I-C underscore W. And I'm constantly tweeting uh, new stuff. And Definity is just Definity.org. But the place you really want to go is internetcomputer.org. And actually, that website was recently upgraded with an AI. So you don't have to trawl through all the um, content up there. You can just like click your cursor into the AI box, type a question, and press ask, I think it says. Amazing. Folks, what an episode with Dominic Williams, founder and chief scientist of Definity Foundation. He was dropping knowledge bombs all over the place, everything decentralized AI, AI dApps, hosting AI models, multi-chain DeFi, a little bit of everything. We jumped in. If you guys enjoyed this one, I hope you did. Please do subscribe. It would be the world to my team and I. Speaking of the team, love you guys so much. Thank you for everything. You us, you are the man. And back to the listeners, love you guys. Keep on growing those bags and keep on staying healthy, wealthy, and happy. Bye for now and we'll talk soon.